Well, welcome to the English Bubble. Today I'm joined by Richard Banfield again, and we're looking at Gusbourne. So Gusbourne's an estate that's been around for quite some years now. Uh, 2004 they started, the first harvest in 2006. And they have quite a lot of hectares in the ground, 90 hectares, and it's split over two main areas. So they have 60 areas in Appledore in Kent, and then 30 hectares in West Sussex, um, near the Goodwood Racecourse, that several of you might know. So, so that's Gusbourne. Richard, we've seen them over the last five plus years, I think establishing themselves as quite a nice niche of getting better and better and better with every vintage. Very much so. They've grown very, very steadily. They've been growing right. in size, they've been growing in stature, they've been working on their image. I love the, I, I, I think the, the branding is really nicely done. Right. Good, bold branding on the label, very much building the Gusborne brand. Yeah. And with 90 hectares, of course, that does make them a serious player mm -hmm. in every sparkling wine. Good, good size. And they, I find they're doing a, a very, very good job. Whenever I do, I'm involved in blind tastings of English sparkling wines, Gusborne is always up there. Right. You know, their wines are never far off. They're also making some lovely still wines. It's not uh -huh. the subject of today, but their Chardonnay and Pinot are two of England's best still wines, I would say. They're doing, a, they're doing a very good job. They're setting an excellent example. And I like the fact that, again, they're relatively adventurous. They've come uh -huh. out with certain cuvées. Um, different, they've been quite ambitious with some of their pricing for one or two wines. Yes. But I, I don't mind that. I like the fact that they're trying things. And I also think that if you're a, a winemaker or a viticulturalist, you have to have new goals all the time. Yeah. They love being set. Well, can you do this? What can you achieve here? And that's what's going to take England forward. Yes. Because remember, it is still a very, very young business. You know, Gusborn isn't even 20 years old yet. Right. So I, I like the fact that they, they're setting themselves these targets. How can we improve? How can uh -huh. we get better? And so, so I, I, I applaud these initiatives, personally. And a kind of an interesting fact here is often what we would say would be in a champagne, the equivalent would be the entry level brute non vintage. Mm -hmm. Now, in England, this doesn't actually happen in many cases, does it? It's the, it's the entry-level vintage. It's, it's so true, because English sparkling wine has been in the fortunate position of uh, demand exceeding supply right. for the last 10 to 15 years. And so they've, 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 because they've been keen to bring in some revenue, because uh -huh. as we know, plant, setting up an estate, planting a vineyard is an expensive yeah. process. They've been keen to try and bring in some revenue as quickly as possible. So that's meant that most English sparkling wine has been vintage right. rather than non-vintage because they haven't been able to build up the reserve Reserves. stocks. That's begun to change, of course, uh -huh. with the 2016 vintage, which was relatively plentiful. Some of the bigger estates, like Gusborne, started being able to put down some reserve wines. So yeah. we're seeing one or two more non-vintage wines now than we've in. in the past. Yes. So this is all 2018. Um, and actually, interestingly, the dominant grape variety is, is Meunier. So 46% is Meunier, and 19 is Pinot Noir, and the remainder, 35, is, is Chardonnay. So very much um, dominated by the, by the red grapes here. And are you picking up um, Meunier as the dominant, or...? I suppose I expect Meunier to be fruity. <sighs> yes. That's exactly what this is. Yeah. Um, I'm struggling at the moment to be a bit more specific on the fruit, but both aromatically on the palate, it is the fruitiness of this wine that, that, that leaps out. Plenty of flavour. Uh, the palate is lovely. It's just it's just delicious already. You can. I think it does it does what a cuvee a non vintage yes. should do. It's giving a lot of pleasure right now. But certainly. Yeah. The fruit. Now they say a little bit. So it's predominantly stainless steel fermented. And it, it does say a small percentage is barrel fermented. So, you know, there's a little bit of oak contact. That probably helps a little bit with, with the mouthfeel. And there is, you it's, know, we, we mentioned this term, there is a little bit of reductive um, yep. charm to it. A bit of reduction, but not to the extent that it conceals right. the fruit in any way, I don't think. I think it's a, a complexing factor mm -hmm. rather than a, a dominant factor, let's say. On the palate, isn't that funny? 
I think the palette's giving more away than the, the aromatics. Um, and it's got so much to it, hasn't it? And it's really interesting because we've it's got plenty of flavour at the front of the palette. Yes. But and this is interesting given that it's Meunier based, because it's not always what you expect from Meunier, but it follows through really nicely on the finish as well. Yeah. It lasts well. There's the freshness, the liveliness. Mm -hmm. They just lead to what I find is a lovely lingering aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It's beautifully done. Dosage, you're conscious of the dosage, the sweetness of fruit, yep. but in a, a very pleasurable way. <laughs> I, I'm liking the, I almost got like a cranberry, you know, like I associate cranberry with a little bit of sharp, yep. it's like bitter element. It's yes. almost like some of that quite attractive red fruit with mm -hmm. just a little bit of a bitter twist that I'm quite liking. It, it, it certainly adds something to it, doesn't it? It's, a, it's, oh, it's sheer joy. Drinking beautifully. So there we go. Um, now this was disgorged. Um, let's just have a look. This was disgorged in April 2022. So, you know, 10, um, 11 months um, post-disgorgement. So maybe that's just coming out of its right, okay. little sleep after it's always, it's disgorged. Always good if you can allow a few months, isn't it, after, after disgorgement. Certainly it's shown beautiful. I think there's some lovely fruit um, concentration in it. Yeah. So um, now our second sparkling today from from Gusborn is their Blanc de Blanc and also from 2018. So we're back to this vintage which is producing for England some fantastic um, wines. They all seem to have beautiful fruit from 2018. So shall we see shall we see what this one's um, what this one's doing? So obviously it's all Chardonnay. This, I'm looking forward to this because the, so the CEO and head winemaker at right. Gusborn is Charlie Holland, who used to be at Ridgeview. He was the, the senior winemaker at Ridgeview for many years. And Ridgeview are considered one of the top Blanc right. Blanc winemakers. So it'll be very interesting to see how he's getting on with. So again, like, um, like the, 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 the Brut, um, then this is also predominantly stainless steel fermented does say a little bit is barrel fermented. Um, I'm not picking that picking that up, so there's not a sort of overwhelming um, oak impact from this. I'm not picking it up on the nose so much. I pick it up a little bit on the palate mm -hmm. in terms of the, the breadth on mm. the palate and some of the, the, the flavour profile that slightly, I always find it hard to describe, but it's because it's not a woody note it comes right. across as maybe something slightly honeyed, yes. something along those lines that indicates a little bit of oak. Now, the one thing I do love about this is the lemon, uh, lemon's, lemon richness. Yeah. It's just like, you know, like I call them dripping, drippingly ripe lemons. Mm. They've got that beautiful um, uh, concentration. It's so often, Blanc de Blanc, whether it's from England or, or Champagne, the wines, particularly when they're relatively young, uh -huh. like this one, you're conscious of a tightness mm -hmm. and you're, you're admiring a precision mm -hmm. without necessarily admiring great intensity or, or complexity of flavour. Right. I suppose what I like here is that even in a relatively young wine, yes. they've produced something with quite a lot of flavour already, quite a lot to like even now. And you feel it can still go further, it looks, smells and tastes very young. So it can definitely go further, but there's a lot of pleasure in this for a four-year-old Blanc de Blanc. Now, I wonder if there's a clue here, Richard, because we talked about the two main estates that they have at Gersborn. So yeah. um, they don't tell us the percentages. Um, it might be quite interesting to know. But obviously one of the estates um, in Kent is more, is more clay and seashell based. And it's not till we get to the other estate where they're more classically chalk based. So we've got those two components, which might account for the that, that depth you were It might well be. I, I think Gus Bourne are in a, a, a privileged position in this respect, because I think we're going to hear much more in the coming years about the relative mm -hmm. merits and relative character of grapes and wines from mm -hmm. different counties. At the moment, I think it's still pretty hard to draw any firm conclusions. Gus Bourne are in a perfect position 
to observe on that and comment on it. And as you say, it'd be lovely to know exactly what the split is here. Um, one would like to think that part of the reason for the harmony yep. of this is the fact that maybe that they've drawn on grapes from both counties. And I think that's, sure. you know, to me, the, the, the love of this is that it's got a sort of mouth-watering freshness. Mm. There's a lightness. And I don't say this very often about English sparklings, but there is a bit of seaside character. There's a bit of, you know, there is some, quite a lot of salinity in that. Yes, yes. Um, which, which, which it almost needs to balance that richness of fruit. That right. Got, which, and 2018, it was a very good vintage in England, so certainly vintage the winemakers were extremely happy with. So to me, the, um, it's fascinating, isn't it? Both from the same vintage, Obviously, predominantly red grapes, and a good chunk of the red is Moubier, and then obviously all Blanc de Blanc. Um, two very, very different um, outcomes of what we're seeing in the glass. I'm, I'm, I'm drawn immediately to the Blanc de Blanc. I think it's very elegant. I love its lightness, and it's got what I call that um, sort of Moorish character. I'm going to follow my Carpe Diem, Epicurean uh, uh, side of my, my okay. character now, and I'm going to go for the Brut Reserve, actually. Oh? Because that, for me, is giving me the joy right now. Okay. Love that. Lots of flavour, beautifully balanced, and I'm really pleased to see a, a, a sort of cuvee wine like mm -hmm. this showing so well. Well, this is, it's going to be fascinating to watch Gus Board, like many of the English sparkling um, wineries because they're getting better every year and I think as their winemaking um, gets better and better which we're definitely seeing the vineyards are getting some age um, the future I think is very interesting they have an expensive cuvee that's just come out so you know there's lots happening there is um, lots happening thank Thanks you so Richard Thanks, um, Chardonnay and well no no preference there so well done to Gusborne well done to Gusborne and upwards Cheers, everybody.